Hello and welcome to a first impressions of Fabled Lands. This is apparently based on a book series and as you can see down at the bottom left there the beloved fable land series by british authors dave morris and jamie thompson will make their debut on steam on the 20th of may in 2021 it's been quite a few months since it released into early access if you'd like to check it out there is a link in the description and as i said this is a complete first impression so what we're going to do is we're going to start a new game and we're going to see what happens now bear in mind that this is somewhat described as a solo Dungeons and Dragons adventure and I actually really love that I don't know about you but I'm a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons and the way that the whole kind of thing works you know creating your own background creating your own story your legendary character and, and seeing what happens to them anyway Give your hero a name, change their appearance, and select one of the six professions. Alright, so we can choose Mage, Warrior, Priest, Wayfarer, Troubadour, and, uh, well, Warrior. Okay, so Troubadour is a bard. <laughs> uh, yes, the, the jokes about bards, we know them. Alright, I think I'm actually going to go for a rogue here. I actually quite like that. Grey Malkin. Oh, that's a, that seems like a pretty fun name, actually. Hmm. Uh, should we... Oh, I don't know whether I should go... Uh, you know what? I'm going to go for Sneaky Steve. There you go. I mean, how can I say no to that, right? I have to make some some really, really stupid name like that. Some alliteration thrown in there as well. Why not? Okay, so let's go for Classic Difficulty. And these are our starting skills. Can I actually change them? No, it doesn't seem like it. But Shadow Dash seems pretty fun. And Poisonous Vile. You know me. In these kinds of games, I absolutely love poison and bleed effects and all that sort of thing so it's going to be a lot of fun let's have a look and see what happens all right so here we go the isle of druids the approach of dawn has turned the sky a milky gray green like jade the sea is a luminous pane of silver holding the tiller of your sailing boat you keep your gaze fixed on the glittering constellation known as the spider it marks the north, and by keeping it to port, you know you are still on course. The sun appears in a trembling burst of red fire at the rim of the world. Slowly, the chill of night gives way to brazen warmth. You lick your parched lips. There is a little water sloshing in the bottom of the barrel by your feet, but not enough to see you through another day. Sealed in a scroll case, tucked into your jerkin, is the parchment map your grandfather gave you on his deathbed. You remember his stirring tales of far sea voyages, of kingdoms beyond the western horizon, of sorcerous islands, and ruined palaces filled with treasure. As a child, you dreamed of nothing else but the magical quests that were in store if you too became an adventurer. You never expected to die in an open boat before your adventures even began. Let's continue. Securing the tiller, you unroll the map and study it again. You hardly need to. Every detail is etched into your memory by now. According to your reckoning, you should have reached the east coast of Harkuna, the great northern continent, days ago. A pasty gray blob splatters onto the map. After a moment of stunned surprise, you look up and curse the seagull, circling directly overhead. Then it strikes you. Where there's a seagull, there may be land. You leap to your feet and scan the horizon. Sure enough, a line of white cliffs lie a league to the north. Have you been sailing along the coast all this time without realizing the mainland was so close? Steering towards the cliffs, you feel the boat judder against rough waves. A howling wind whips plumes of spindrift across the sea. Breakers pound the high cliffs. The tiller is yanked out of your hands. The little boat is spun around, out of control, and goes plunging in towards the coast. You leap clear at the last second. There is the snap of timber, the roaring crescendo of the waves, and then silence as you go under. Striking out wildly, you try to swim clear of the razor-sharp rocks. For a while, the undertow threatens to drag you down. Then suddenly a wave catches you and flings you contemptuously up onto the beach. It's time to begin your adventure. Battered and bedraggled, you lie gasping for breath until you hear someone walking along the shore towards you. 
Wary of danger, you lose no time in getting to your feet. Confronting you is an old man clad in a dirty loincloth. His eyes have a feverish, bright look that is suggestive of either a mystic or a madman. Well, 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 what have we here, friends? asks the old man. He seems to be talking to someone next to him, although you are certain he is alone. Looks like a washed-up adventurer to me, he says in answer to his own question. All wet and out of luck. He carries on having a conversation, a conversation that quickly turns into a heated debate. He is clearly quite mad. Excuse me, um, excuse me, you shout above the hubbub in an attempt to grab the old man's attention. He stops and stares at you. Is this the Isle of the Druids? you ask impatiently. Indeed it is, says the old man. I see that you are far from a far land, so it is up to me to welcome you to Hakuna. But I think you may have much to do here, as it is written in the stars that someone like you would come. Your destiny awaits you. Follow me, young adventurer. The old man turns smartly about and begins walking up a path towards some hills. You can just see some sort of monolithic stone structure atop one of them. All right, so we have now three options. We could follow the old man, we can scour the remnants washed ashore, or we can explore the island on our own. Well, I think it's probably a good idea, considering he seems, well, a bit crazy, admittedly, okay. But I think he seems quite friendly apart from that, so I think we'll follow him. During your short trip upward, the old man regales you with tales of your destiny and fate, continuously argue, arguing with himself as he does so. Make a move. Alright, here we go. Click on any of the available map locations in order to move your character, and we can go to these obsidian stones. As far as I'm aware, that's all that we can do right now. You reach a hill covered with a circle of large obsidian standing stones. Despite the bitter wind that blows across these hills, the stones are unweathered and seem almost newly lain. Here are the gates of the world, says the mad old man. The stones are laid in such a way that they form three archways, each carven with mystic symbols and runes of power. Each gate will take you to a part of the world of Hakuna, though I know not where, explains the old man. Abruptly, he turns around and sets off down the hill, babbling to himself. His voice fades as he descends the hill, leaving you alone with the brooding stones and the howling wind. All right. There are three stone gates engraved with ancient runes. Each gate is marked with a name. Yellowport, Marlock City, and Wishport. From here, you can see the coast and the whole island, which is heavily forested. All right, shall we step through one of... Let's step through one of the archways, why not? That sounds fun. You intend to step through one of the archways. Let us step through the Yellowport arch. You step through the archway... Immediately, the symbols on the stone begin to glow with red-hot energy. Your hair stands on end and your body tingles. A crackling nimbus of blue-white force engulfs you. The sky darkens, and thunder and lightning crash and leap across the heavens. Suddenly, your vision fades and everything goes black. When your sight returns, you find yourself at the gates of a large city set on an ochre-colored river. A vile stink of brimstone permeates the air. You wrinkle your face up in disgust and gag involuntarily. Welcome to New... Uh, I mean, not Newport. No, that's not Newport. It's welcome to Yellowport, says a passing merchant. Yellowport is the second largest city in Sokara. It is mainly a trading town and is known for its exotic goods from distant Ankonkonu, way to the south. The stinking river brings rich deposits of sulfur from the lake of the sea dragon down to the town, where it is extracted and stored in the large waterfront warehouses run by the Merchant's Guild. From here, the mineral is exported all over Harkuna. 
Unfortunately, all that sulfur has its drawbacks. The stink is abominable, and much of the city has a yellowish hue. The river is so full of sulfur that it is virtually useless as a source of food or of drinking water. However, the demand for sulfur, especially from the sorcerer's guilds, is great. Politically, much has changed in the past few years. The old and corrupt king of Sokara, Corin VII, has been deposed and executed in a military coup. General Grieve Marlock and the army now control Sokara. The old Council of Yellowport has been indefinitely dissolved and a provost marshal, Marlowe's Marlock, the general's brother, appointed as military governor of the town. To leave Yellowport by sea, buy or sell ships and cargo. Go to the harbour master. Alright, so we can now go and do whatever we want to do. So I suppose we should, we, well, we should probably go and explore, shouldn't we? You walk around the smelly streets of the sulfurous city. The market is large and busy. At the corner of Brimstone Plaza, gigantic braziers burn sweet-smelling incense in an attempt to overpower the rotten egg smell that permeates the whole city. There are many stalls and goods to choose from. Your adventuring instincts push you to explore some of the back streets. Okay, we're going to explore the city by night because I think that's going to be the most fun. You set out to explore the city of Yellowport at night. Unwholesome, though it is, with its reeking air and dusty okra streets. Okay, head for the <laughs> head for the rough part of town. Let's do that. I'm actually wanting to get into a fight if you couldn't if you couldn't believe it. While making your way through the back streets of the poor quarter, you are set upon knife-wielding <laughs> knife-wielding thugs who intend who intend of relieving you of your purse. Okay, talk your way out of this. We have to make a, a charisma roll. Yes, and now this is where the D and D sort of aspects come in. You decide to try and talk your way out of the situation. Roll two dice and you score in the given ability. To succeed in a task, you must get higher than the difficulty. Alright, so I have an odd of success of 90, almost 92%. So we should have a pretty easy time of this. There you go. Successful charisma roll. The thugs are confused by your rhetoric and leave you alone. Alright, there we go. Okay, so that was that. That doesn't seem to really help us that much. Let's go and speak to the marshal, shall we? You wait several hours to be seen by one of the provost marshal's aides, a certain Captain Royzer. Okay, convince him of your loyalty? Yeah, convince him of your loyalty. I can make another charisma roll. We have a 50... Ooh, 58% chance. Let's try it. We made it. Nice. Captain Royzer is impressed with your claims of loyalty to Sokara and decides you could be useful to the provost marshal. The Provost Marshal is a rich and powerful man, cunning and capable. I have need of someone like you, he says. A group of rebels loyal to the old king are hiding out in the cold bleak mountains. Their leader, Nergen Corin, is dangerous to us, as he is heir to the old throne and a rally rallying point for the rebels. Penetrate their stronghold and slay Nergen Corin, and you will be richly rewarded. I could promise you 500 shards and a title if you succeed. All right, let's take the <laughs> let's take it. Why not? I think that's really fun. Cold Bleak Mountains. All right, new information was added to your log. Click the quest log at the bottom of the screen to access it. So you can see that right here. Kingslayer is currently very hard. So probably a good idea not to do that just yet. Very well says the Provost Marshal and dismisses you. You leave the palace. Click on the compass button on the minimap at the top right corner of the screen to open your world map. Important quest destinations will be marked on this map. There's the uh, the world map. So you can see here that this is a very large game as well because you can see this is where the first quest is. This is where we currently are. And we are going to be able to, I think, I would assume at least, be able to explore most of these areas on the screen. So that is pretty cool in my opinion. All right, so. Right, uh, I, I don't even know where to go right now. Should we go into the tavern? Let's go into the tavern. The Gold Dust Tavern is a plush inn besides the city gates. The tavern costs you one shard a day. 
Each day you spend here, you can recover one stamina point if injured, up to the limit of your normal unwounded stamina score. Well, obviously I don't need to do that right now, so that's obviously where we go to heal ourselves if we uh, come under attack, I guess. Let's go to the harbor. Okay, I have 16 shards right now, so we can get a passage to the Isle of Druids, or we can get passage to Marlock City, or we can buy a ship. Unfortunately, as you can see right here, you're gonna need to, <laughs> you're gonna need 250 shards to be able to get that. You can also buy cargo if you want to do some trading, and you can also get a crew. Obviously, that is very, very much free because these are press ganged, and uh, that's not gonna be too good. Okay, well. I could get a passage to Marlock City. Hmm. Can I leave? Yes, I can. Look at that. I can literally just leave the city and I can go somewhere else. You can drag the camera. Okay, well, let's go over here first. You are on the cobbled road between Yellowport and Marlock City and is well kept by the Sokaran military. You spot a man up ahead, striding towards you. Suddenly, five or six bandits appear from the wayside to assault him. The lone figure executes a series of movements almost faster than the eye can see, and you see his sword flashing in the sun. Moments later, the bandits are all lying dead or dying around him. You stop to compliment him on his swordsmanship. The man, a grizzled veteran of many campaigns, regards you with steely gray eyes and says, I have learned much of the arts of war in my time, it is true. Impressed by his skill and demeanor, you venture to ask him to teach you some of these arts. He looks you up and down with a critical eye. All right, we have an 83% chance of doing this. Let's cross our fingers. We did it. He seems to see something he approves of because he says, Perhaps, but first you must prove yourself. There is a knight, a man of great evil. He is known as the Black Dragon Knight. Defeat him in battle, and I will teach you. Bring me back his black dragon shield as proof of your valor. With that, he turns away and walks. Well, he technically turns and walks away. All right, there we go, the black dragon knight. But how will I find him? And then how will I find you? You cry. Would you have me kill him for you as well? He asks over his shoulder. As for the second, ask for me in the Blue Griffin Tavern in Karan Baru. My name is Yanrit the Sun. You come to the top of a windswept cliff. An ancient pillar of jumbled rock, pitted and weather-beaten, stands at the cliff's edge, like a broken finger pointing at the sky. Seagulls sing their song of desolation in the air. Judging by the runes etched into the rock, the tour dates back to the time of the Shaddaa, a race that ruled Hakuna so long ago. They are lost in myth and legend. All right, we can examine the runes if we want to. 41% chance. Yeah, my magic is not very good. Yeah, we failed that. The runes mean nothing to you. All right, so let's go down to the beach. You climb down a narrow track to the beach. The sea pounds the rocky shore and the spray lashes your face. A mournful yet utterly captivating singing suddenly fills your ears. You look out to sea and spot several mermaids and mermen cavorting in the surf. Come, come to us, one of them calls in a lilting voice that fills you with a yearning desire to plunge into the sea and swim out to them. We have a six, okay, sanctity. No, I have a sanctity of one. I am going to die. What do you bet? Oh dear. Your mind falls into a waking dream and you walk lazily into the waters. The merfolk, laughing and singing, take you down to their undersea home of living, uh, living coral even, where they stop you from drowning with their fairy magic. They keep you for several weeks until you are no longer an amusement to them. You wake up. Uh, no doubt I'm going to have lost some stamina. What do you think? You wake up, as is from a long sleep, with only a shadowy memory of your ordeal to find yourself washed up in the harbor of Yellowport. You have lost all the possessions you are carrying, but you still have your money. Really? 
Okay, so what did I actually even have, to be honest? Because I'm not entirely sure. I mean, did, did I have... I don't even know. Did I have some equipment or anything? I don't think so, to be honest. I do have the ability to do some damage, as you can see right here. So I should be I should be all right. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for this uh, for this video. If you would like to check out Fabled Lands, then you definitely should through the link in the description. If you really like D&D, if you like text-based games, if you like choose-your-own-adventures, if you like RPGs, this is going to be right up your street. And if you'd like to see more of this from me, then by all means let me know, because I absolutely love these kinds of games. And if you are not going to join me on the journey, then I'm just going to do it myself off-screen. And there you go. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it myself. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.